Okay, welcome back to part two of this scene. Um, I think it's lesson 25 is what this one might end up being. I was just uh, stamping out some additional imagery. Uh, in this case, foreground overhanging kind of a Spanish moss imagery. I did it on this side and two impressions. I'm going to do one on this side kind of even out the composition a little bit. I don't want to make it too symmetrical, so I'm not going to do exactly the same thing that I did on the uh, the other side in terms of the two impressions, but we'll see how this first one goes, and if it, we'll see what it needs. Okay, uh, okay, maybe I'll, uh, I think I do want another one. Stamp a little bit less of it, maybe. Maybe down a little bit lower, maybe. Spelling like about right here. Okay. And I was thinking about putting some sort of a. Um, image right in the middle. To represent kind of a more distant um, island that's been created by the, the flooded uh, landscape. I think it needed something in here. This is the cypress cluster. The horizon is right about there on those two tips, approximately, so... I'll try about right there. Good even pressure. And again, I'm using the Tech and Peel uh, temporary mounting system for um, bare rubber image. Okay. And it peels right off of here. And, as I've said before, be sure to cover it up because it is so tacky. Put a piece of paper down on it or something like that, it's just going to stick like, uh, stick like iron. Okay, before I do that, let's see. Let's do some foreground in here. Here's some cypress knees. Okay, now we have that um, water texture down there that we've created with the use of um, kind of a streaking motion, same that's going up in the sky. Let's do the same thing with this water pattern stamp, just to create another kind of layer of texture in there. I'm doing this in a, in a brown. We'll see if it shows up when it dries. If it doesn't, then I'll just stamp it out in a darker tone. Okay. And that being said, where it doesn't show up out over here at all because the background is darker than the brown, then you just go on and do it again in those areas as it starts moving off into the uh, transitioning into the darkness. Take those areas and make the impressions make darker impressions. Okay. Now, it gets a bit busy in there too with the use of all that texture. So you can go back in with our stylus tool and let's kind of 
smooth those areas out a touch with some additional tone. And right here I can go into the, uh, the image and I can kind of anchor the images down a little bit more with some additional shadow. There is a, a shadow inherently on the image itself. Uh, in this case it was the cypress, but you know, you can go back in there now and do the same thing, reiterate that shadow with some additional tone now that you know where it's going to be. Okay, now um, we have that line, background lining running through there. Uh, let's go in and kind of flesh in these images a little bit more. Like that. I'm starting with the number 8 red. Okay, let's do the same thing on this side. I'm going to center light these trees as well. I mean, for the most part, I'm going to try to aim to put most of the tone for them on the far the, uh, the outside edges so it looks like the light is coming from within and lighting up the interior sides of the uh, trees. This is the purple uh, violet number eight from the Marvy line. Deepening some of the shadows. And see, by doing this, by coloring in these trees, you're making them a little bit more um, visually solid. If I have all that light running through them, they look kind of transparent, of course, because you know they, they would be. Um, if the light is shining through them, so... Kind of an implied... Um, solidification of the image through the use of uh, opacity. <laughs> I mean, these are transparent inks, but it just looks, you know, it looks like a darker um, image. Okay. And if the light is coming from in here, I can hit some shadows down here and really anchor these trees down a little bit more. Again, through additional tone. Let's darken in these areas too. I really want to anchor these trees down a little bit more. And I think I, I can use a little streak of, you know, some additional tone in there. I like texture, but I don't want it so busy. I want it to, you know, that texture to kind of blend in as well. Okay. Let's do this. I wasn't sure if I was going to put this in there or not. I don't want it Again, I don't want things too busy. This is the uh, lily brass. And I just can't, you know, I keep wanting to give additional dimension um, to 
to areas. I want it to make, make it look like that water is, uh, you know, there's dimension to it, there's depth, and ha having things kind of floating on the surface or sticking up through the surface kind of creates a little bit of a texture and a textural difference from the sky. You know, sometimes you want, you know, you want it to make it look like, you know, where does the, you know, sky land and the sky begin or something like that. But in this case, I want some, uh, I want a little bit of variation. I want to anchor some of that imagery down a little bit more. Let's try this. I got some migrating birds in the background. I'm doing this one in a dark brown. Maybe they'll look a little bit farther back than those foreground limbs if I do it in kind of a dark brown as opposed to a black. Lighter things seem farther back in the scene uh, that way. Okay. Favorite part of the scene quite often. Um, adding in some highlights. And I don't know how these are going to look because I didn't save any kind of my white light, so um, let's just give it a try. Uh, this is a, a white gel pen and really going to try and uh, direct the viewer's eye in the center of the scene by making it center lit. And I'm going to reiterate the lighting scheme. Uh, the lighting scheme is just, you know, a center lit thing, so on the interior side of the um, objects, okay, that's where I'm putting my highlights. So on these trees over here, I'm putting the highlights on the left side. And if the lighting looks like it's, or it's, I'm implying that the lighting is kind of on the horizon down there, then if you have a an overhanging tree and the lighting is coming from below it, then what I would do for these trees right here is I would bottom light them like this. A few more highlights closer to the light area, lit areas, and as it moves off in, into the shadows here, a few less um, kind of little highlights. Okay. branch out here, even. Okay, kind of starts pulling the branches up from the background. Let's see, let's zoom in here and see if you can see this a little bit better. branches and if water is kind of a shiny reflective surface then let's go in and add some highlights in photography they call light that is brighter than white uh, they call it specular light and it's typically like a glare or something shining off something you know, some kind of a reflective surface. And without those, things don't look as dimensional. Three-dimensional, I guess.
group some of your dots, you know, cluster them a little bit. Okay. And, I don't know. Would you see stars in the sunset? No, probably not. But definitely they'd start coming out in the twilight, so... Um, I'll expedite the process and put in a few stars. <laughs> 